My name is Bob McKellar. I, I'm a retired scientist, molecular spectroscopist. I was actually born in Ottawa, but raised in Victoria, BC. I studied physics at university and then went to the University of Toronto to do postgraduate work in physics, molecular physics with the, the great Harry Welsh um, at the University of Toronto. Uh, I then came as a postdoctoral fellow to the National Research Council in Ottawa, uh, the, the spectroscopy group that was founded by Gerhard Hertzberg, and um, ended up spending my whole scientific career here at NRC in Ottawa. My own uh, first exposure to Hertzberg and to the group, uh, the spectroscopy group here at NRC, began in 1971 when I arrived as a new postdoctoral fellow in the fall of 71. And literally two or three weeks after I started, and I was still uh, learning the ropes as it were, the Nobel Prize was awarded to Hertzberg. So that was a very exciting time for me not only because of the Nobel Prize, but because it was the start of my own NRC career in the spectroscopy group. I was, uh, when I first arrived at NRC, I was a postdoctoral fellow. And the, being a, a postdoc in that, in the famous spectroscopy group was a, a great experience because the group attracted people from all around the world uh, and often the really, really top-notch young scientists. I was lucky enough uh, after my postdoc ended to be offered a permanent position at NRC. So I, I stayed on and uh, in the end became the leader of the spectroscopy group, you know, long after Hertzberg had retired. My own spectroscopic work uh, was mostly in the infrared region. That's the wavelength of light that we can't see, but they're still there and that we think of it as heat radiation. And um, Hertzberg himself didn't really um, work in that wavelength range too much. So what I was pursuing was in one way quite similar to Hertzberg's work because I w worked on unstable molecules in the infrared region, which at the time was sort of a developing field uh, following in Hertzberg's footsteps in a sense of, of trying to capture these free radicals and short-lived molecular ions, but pushing that into the infrared wavelength region. And it turned out in the end that lasers became a very valuable tool for doing that. And um, we were fairly successful in, in many ways. And, and I also studied another kind of short-lived molecule that Hertzberg never really did too much with. And that was the weakly bound molecules. Um, almost all molecules attract each other and that's why if you cool a gas down it becomes a liquid and you cool it down more it becomes a solid because those molecules of water or whatever are attracted to each other but the attractions are quite weak and in the gas phase most of the molecules are are still separate you have the, all your individual water molecules that just go around colliding with other water molecules. But uh, because they attract each other, there's always a small percentage, always a few of them, that are actually stuck together at any one time. And they may not stick together for very long, but it's long enough to allow you to obtain the spectrum uh, if you can find it. And it's, but the spectrum is weak because there aren't very many of these guys stuck together. So a lot of my 
career was spent looking at these weakly bound molecules uh, in the gas phase or in a something we call a supersonic jet, which turns out to be a good way of making more of these weakly bound species. Uh, and looking at their spectrum in the infrared region. And that spectrum then tells us about the, these weak forces that are holding the molecules together. And even though these forces are weak, they're still important because they ultimately are the things that cause the condensation into a liquid and a solid. And um, the most detailed probe of this, these weak interactions uh, that's sort of not contaminated by other effects is comes from studying the, the spectrum of the weakly bound molecule itself. Hertzberg was a spectroscopist and at the very early days he was uh, looking at atoms but um, then fairly quickly in his earlier career shifted to spectroscopy of molecules um, uh, which is in a sense more challenging and at that time was a very new field. The molecules that Hertzberg studied were almost always in the gas phase so that you were actually looking at the molecule itself um, rather than the molecule itself plus its interaction with everything else, which is what happens if you're looking in the liquid or solid phase spectroscopy. So in the gas phase, you're looking at molecules by analyzing the light that they give off or the light that is absorbed if it passes through the gas of the molecules. And that light can be visible light, but it can also be the light that we, we can't see in the ultraviolet range, for example, which is higher energy light than, than humans can see, or in the infrared range, which is lower energy light that humans also can't see. And what you do with the light that a spectroscopist is analyzing is to split it up into its different colors or wavelengths, uh, just as you see in a, in a rainbow. So for example, if you pass light through a, a glass prism, you can split it into its different colors. And which colors come through the molecules and which ones are absorbed, or which uh, colors are given off or emitted by the molecules, that's what a spectroscopist works with, is this fingerprint of absorption or emission of light by the molecules. And by analyzing that pattern of light that's absorbed or emitted, you can find out a lot of details about the molecule itself. For example, um, what's the shape of the molecule? We know that water is, has the chemical formula H2O, but where is the H and where are the O's and how far apart are the O's and H's and what angle do you have between the, the, the different bonds? So that's the information that you get from analyzing the spectroscopy. Hertzberg started out looking at atoms, uh, but then fairly quickly moved into looking at molecules with spectroscopy. And that was the early days when the, that was first happening. And he did a variety of research uh, in the earlier days, but fairly quickly moved on to a special interest in unstable molecules or free radicals, which are more challenging to study than ordinary molecules. 
because these free radicals only live for a short time under most circumstances. But they're very important because free radicals are, in a sense, the intermediates in chemical reactions. If you have a reaction of two molecules that then goes through to create two other molecules, like happens if you have a, a fire, for example, you've got things burning and using up oxygen and new molecules are being created. And so these short-lived intermediate molecules are important for chemistry and they're very interesting for spectroscopy because number one, they're challenging because usually they, these radicals don't live for very long. So that they're, it's harder to capture their spectra. And number two, they're interesting just in their own right because often we don't really know what the, the exact structure of a free radical is gonna be. And doing spectroscopy, um, will tell you the structure. And, and the challenge, of course, also makes it interesting. So Hertzberg's fame, in a way, uh, famous scientific work, came from trying to discover these elusive free radicals. For example, CH2, one carbon and two hydrogens, which he pursued for many years and after some false starts, uh, he, he found the spectrum and uh, that was one of the most important aspects, I think, that, that won him the Nobel Prize. And as his career evolved, he also moved into studying molecular ions. Now they're unstable too because they, they're charged, electrically charged. and. Um, also very challenging to observe. But so the, the later years of his career in the, say, 70s and 80s at NRC um, was very much a pursuit of spectra of molecular ions. Hertzberg was basically an experimentalist rather than a abstract theorist, but his contributions to present-day spectroscopy probably um, would lie more in the area of analysis and understanding of a spectrum, and the idea that you can understand the patterns in spectroscopy by relating them through fairly simple tools like graphical ideas, um, you can relate them and, and understand the pattern of, spe of spectra um, by uh, visualizing patterns and looking at sequences and analyzing things in a logical way. Spectroscopy today, of course, has developed in many directions and um, in some areas of spectroscopy, lasers have become very important, but Hertzberg never really had too much to do with lasers, even though his basic work uh, was very much uh, underlay the various kinds of lasers that have been developed since then. And there are other tools which, of course, are very important for spectroscopy today uh, including computers, personal computers, which we take for granted now, but um, just weren't available in, in Hertzberg's day, really. And um, so the, that's why I say that it's, it's more the, the concepts underlying spectroscopic analysis um, and, the, and the fact that Hertzberg collected and laid out all these different aspects in his books, uh, you know, collected them together so that people could uh, really learn from one source what was happening. Mm -hmm.